times 6 cubed. And I'm going to check for the zero still. Now, I know zero is going to give me zero and zero. I'm just going to put it up there to make sure I don't forget it anywhere. That way I don't lose track of anything that I, I might need, any fractions. Now, if you do 6 to the fourth power, I believe you get 1,296. Can someone double check that for me? So you got negative 1,296 over 4. Plus... Oh, you know what? I made a big mistake. Do you see it? That should be a... I don't know where I got the 2 from, it, but that should be a 6. I saw that 2. Oh, I did. Oh, I did it right. Oh, look at that. I was a genius. I did it in my head. My bad. You know why? Because I was going to do 6 to the 4th again and divide by 3. So 1296 divided by 3 would be easier for me. So either way, whatever. 6 to the 3rd, then times 2. What do you get out of that? Now I know 1296 is divisible by, my, divisible by 4, it's like 300 something, isn't it? 324? So when you combine those, the negative 324 and the positive 432, you get 108. So all together, if you get 2 pi times 108, 216 pi is our volume. It's kind of a cool thing, right? Finding volume of these, these objects. So, so far we've done two examples in like a couple minutes a piece. We've done one where the region's bounded between two curves. We take it around the y-axis. We note that it has to be in terms of x for cylindrical shells. Second one, it's bounded by two curves, but one of them's a real simple curve. One of them's just x equals zero. It's going around the x-axis. It's got to be in terms of y. How many people feel okay with these two examples? I want to show you one more. We'll set it up. I'll leave it to you to finish it up because it's just going to be a basic integral. But I want to show you one more here. Um, I think I mentioned to you before that you can do many of these with the disks and washer method. You can, but it makes them harder sometimes. I want to show you that in this example. So what I'd like to do is revolve the region bounded by this, this, and this around the y-axis. In order to get a, a, what exactly we're doing, a lot of times it's nice to draw a picture. So I'm, I'm going to give you a picture to see what this is. This actually means, okay? So I'd like to tell you, show you, the show you the difference between the shells method and the washers method. You with me? So let's get a nice picture going. That's one, by the way. So we're, we're making kind of an exaggerated picture because you're going to see that the area we're dealing with isn't very big. Now, if I do y equals x squared plus 1, note that that's a parabola, just a parabola that is shifted up one unit. So we have a, an x squared shifted up 1. I'm not going to draw the other side because it's not going to be enclosing any uh, area for us. So I'm just going to deal with half of it. Then we're going to do y equals negative x plus 1. Here's plus 1. Here's negative x. So I get that line. That's negative x plus 1 x equals 1, we talked about over here. What's x equals 1? <coughs> vertical, just like x equals 0 was vertical. Oh, I need to make my parabola fatter. There we go, fat parabola. We had anorexic parabola earlier. I don't want those. That's bad. That's really bad. So this is x squared plus 1. This is x equals 1, and this is negative x plus 1. If we're going around the y-axis, do you guys see the area we're sweeping out? It's the area that's enclosed by those three different curves. It's this right here. <coughs> now let me tell you something. <coughs> you can do this with washers or with shells. 
We're going to consider it with washers first. I'll show you why we have the show method, because washers would be a little ridiculous to do for washers. But let's talk about washers, because you really need to see it, because on your test, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Or maybe I will, but you're going to need to know it. So let's talk about washers. If we were going this way around the y-axis for washers, would you notice that the washers would have to be in terms of y if we're doing the washer method? Around the y, in terms of y for washers. Around the y, solved for y for shells. You hear the difference, right? So if, we're, if we went around the y for washers, you'd have to break it up. The reason why is because you have three different functions going around the y in terms of y. You'd have this one. Uh, it'd be 1 minus x squared plus 1. And then, of course, you would have the, cylindrical, uh, the washer's method, so you'd have the pi and this thing squared dx, like that. For wherever your bounds would be, you'd have to also have to solve those. Oh, you know what? I even, even did that wrong. Why did I do it wrong? Explain to me if I'm going around the y, why I did that wrong. Still in terms of x. So you'd have to solve these things for x first, even to go around the y. So it'd be a tricky problem. You'd have the 1, that'd be easy. But then you'd have to solve this curve in terms of y. Then take this curve minus that one for this interval here. Then you'd have another integral. You'd have 1 minus whatever this is in terms of y. And then you go from your bounds of integration there. So can you see the washer method here? Do you see why I need two integrals is really what I care about. Do you see the two integrals? Oh, if we're doing washer method, this one minus this one plus this one minus this one, that would be the only way to do the washer method for this example. Raise your hand if you understand that one. Yeah. Now, Shell's method says, don't care about that anymore. Shell's method says, hey, that just tells me the end of my balance. Because for Shell's method, I want these in terms of x. I want this to look like this with a top function. Look, if I erase the purple. In terms of x, this one is always on top of that one. Do you see it? Oh, that's nice. So in terms of x, if we're taking that around the y using shells, all I need to do is set up my integral from, where does it start and where does it stop? Zero to one. No problem. What's going to go here? Well, the same thing that always goes there. For cylindrical shells, we're going around the y-axis. We better have it in terms of x. You with me? So we have the x there. Inside my parentheses, I'm not going to have one function right here. I'm going to have two different functions. You just got to be able to tell me which one's on top. Which one is on top? And then? Minus. Like the minus what? Oh, parentheses. Are those important? Very. What's going to be on the bottom? So head nod if you're okay with the setup for our walk, for our, our shells method. We got our in terms of x because we're going around the y. That's how it works for shells method. We have the one on the top. Yeah, great. X squared plus one. Subtracting off one on the bottom. You can really see from the picture here that if I was going around the volume swept out by this entire curve minus the volume swept out by that entire curve gives me the volume between those two functions between those guys. You got that as well. Cool. Top minus bottom. This is the same old cylindrical shells. If we do our integral, we're going to have our 2 pi. Still have an x in there. But we definitely want to clean that up. x squared plus 1 plus x minus 1 dx. x cubed plus x squared dx. That's 2 pi. If we do our integral, we're going to have x to the fourth over 4, x to the third over 3. We're going from 0 to 1. We'll leave that 2 pi hanging out there. Just multiply it at the very end. That's probably the best way you can do these. We plug the 1 in. You're going to get 1 fourth plus 1 third. I'm going to check the 0 to make sure I don't have anything that, that's fishy about this. I want to make sure I get zeros out of them. So 0 plus 0, okay. I know I've got 0.
we got 2 pi, let's see, 1 fourth plus 1 third should give you 7 twelfths. And that will be 7 pi over 6 for our volume. 7 pi over 6. Hey, we just did three pretty hardcore examples of cylindrical shells method in about 15 minutes. That's pretty good, right? Can you guys do it? I don't know. That's up to you to really handle it. Did you understand it when I was doing it? How many people did feel okay with it? <coughs> Notice it's going to be easier because I'm doing it, right? I mean, I know the setup. You're going to, if you didn't have the picture of that, if you didn't have the picture, you'd have to find out where they intersected, or at least draw the picture, graph it on your graphing calculator, but at least find out where it started and where it stopped, and then find out which one's on top, very similar to what we did over here. Then the setup, the setup is the most important part. You've got to set it up correctly. If you do, really, honestly, is, are the integrals hard? No. They're really easy, uh, the integral part of it. Plug in the numbers is just plug in the numbers, but the setup is crucial for you. You've got to get the setup right. Do you guys have any questions on these two before I erase them? When can't we use cylindrical shells? We were talking, we showed us when we can't use the washer method or when we shouldn't use it. When you shouldn't? Um, well, we can't, why couldn't we just stick with shells and go through almost, I haven't seen any problems with any of the examples we've done. Sometimes it's hard to solve for the functions. Like if I gave you something in terms of, if I did this, um, around the x-axis, you have to go and you have to solve that for x. So you have to have in terms of y, you have a square root up there. So basically, whatever it, whatever the given is, use the unless there's something complicated to it, use the appropriate form that makes it easier easiest to set it up. Do the easiest thing possible. Yeah, you have now two ways, right? Two methods. Three. Three. Well, two really. Yeah. Distant washer is the same thing. And this, I mean, notice this yeah. and this was the same. We subtracted functions, but the same thing as distant washer. Uh, this is like the this is like the washer version, washer version of cylindrical shells. This is like the disc version of cylindrical shells, if you, if you will. Uh, but they're the same. So you have washers and you have cylindrical shells. Use the one that is easiest for you, the one you have to do the least amount of work. We're lazy people, right? You don't want to do it the hard way, easy way. Easy way, come on. All right, how many people feel okay about it? Do you feel all right? Any last questions before we go on? Any last words? You ready for the last section of calculus for us? Sounds easy. Um, <laughs> easy. <laughs> Easy is a relative term. <laughs> I'll say that the integrals will be just as easy. <laughs> it's just another formula that you have to know, really. Uh, of course, I will derive the formula for you. 